Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a red-black ingest aggro deck that's featuring a lot of the new Eldrazi from the Battle for Zendikar set. And I've tried multiple versions of the ingest deck. I've tried blue-black, I've tried all three colors, but I think that the most consistently powerful deck is just straight up a red-black since I think the ingest deck wants to be somewhat aggressive and red-black allows us to curve out nicely, have a lot of hasty creatures in it to try and kill the opponent before they try and kill us, since we don't have the most powerful late game available. So let's get started here with our one drops where we have Sludge Crawler, 1-1 one, one for 1, Devoid and Ingest, so whenever we deal combat damage we get to exile the top card for later use. And then for two colorless we can pump up the sludge crawler for one. So the threat of activation is very important. If you attack into a larger creature but you have a lot of mana up, the opponent has to respect that. So most of the time sludge crawler will be able to attack freely. And then of course we can in the late game pump him up multiple times to deal more damage, making sludge crawler pretty powerful. Then we move on to our two drops where we have the unexciting culling drone but we just needed more 2-drops in order to be able to curve out nicely. So just a 2-2, Devoid and Ingest, nothing too fancy going on. But the exciting 2-drop in this deck is 4 Runner of Slaughter, a red and a black for a 3-2, and for 1 colorless we can give a colorless creature haste until end of turn, so that's basically all creatures in this deck. So we can play him for 3 mana to give him self haste, or we can just have him in play and then whatever creature we play next we can uh, give haste for an additional mana making him pretty scary to deal with. Moving on we have Processor Assault, one in a red to deal 5 damage to target creature which is pretty efficient but we do have to pay the additional cost of processing an exiled card which basically means putting it from exile into the player's graveyard so we can only play the assault if we've already hit with one of our ingest creatures or exiled the opponent's cards some other way. So a pretty decent card allows us to play multiple cards in the same turn, so still a nice card to have. Moving on we have another processor card, so that's Wasteland Strangler, a 3-2 for 3 mana which is already kind of decent, but then when he enters the battlefield if we process a card we can give a creature minus 3 minus 3 until end of turn, basically a 2 for 1 if you can uh, kill a decent creature with this ability, so certainly nice to curve into. Then we also have a Dominator Drone, another ingest creature, and when he enters a battlefield he will make the opponent lose 2 life if we control another colorless creature, and a 3-2 himself, so also pretty decent and goes well into a more aggressive deck. Moving on we get to one of the best creatures in the deck, which is Vile Aggregate, Twin Red for a star 5, where star is the number of colorless creatures we control, so by default it's a 1-5 if Vile Aggregate is your only colorless creature, but can easily become a lot larger, and also has Trample, which combines very nicely with Ingest, since he'll be able to ingest most of the time if he can trample over for some damage. Then we get to Nell Drone, which is another decent Eldrazi that synergizes with playing lots of colorless spells, because we can tap him to deal 1 damage to an opponent, and whenever we cast a colorless spell we can untap him, so we can activate him multiple times, and also a 3-1, so if we can attack with the Nettle Drone of course we can just hit for 3. Then we have a removal spell in Touch of the Void, that can also be redirected to the opponent's face, so 3 damage and will exile the creature if it's uh, put into the graveyard. So also allows us to process the exiled creature then. And I think we want uh, Touch of the Void over a card like Complete Disregard because it basically does the same most of the time and this can also be directed to the opponent's face, which is important. Then we get to one of the few non-colorless cards in the deck which is Pia and Kiran Alar. So a 2 2 for 4 mana that comes into play with 2 colorless Thopter creature tokens. So those Thopter tokens go very well with the file aggregate, since that's 2 colorless creatures for the aggregate. And then we can also sacrifice those Thopters to deal some damage, so it goes well into an aggressive deck like this one. 
Another exciting card is Dust Stalker, 4 mana for a 5-3 with haste, and sometimes if we don't control another colorless creature, we'll have to return him to our hand, but most of the time this is just a 4 mana 5-3 with haste, which is very good. Then we get to a Barrage Tyrant, 5 mana for a 5-3, and for 2 in a red we can sacrifice another colorless creature to deal damage equal to its power to target creature or player, so decent in the late game where we can start throwing our creatures at the opponent's face, or if we have to deal with some creature. We also have two copies of Blight Herder, which is another processor card, so if we uh, put two cards from exile into the opponent's graveyard, we can have three 1-1 one -one colorless Eldrazi Sign creature tokens in play, which we can also sacrifice to add mana to our mana pool. So a very efficient card if we do get to process two cards, because then we get seven power and eight toughness for just five mana, which is pretty awesome. And then we also have Obnixilus as a removal spell and a way to draw more cards. And of course his ultimate can also kill an opponent. And our final card is Oblivion Sower, 6 mana, 5, 8, that when he enters the battlefield we get to exile the top 4 cards of the opponent's library and put all lands that player controls from exile into play under our control. So this also includes lands that we may have ingested earlier with other creatures, so this can give us lots of lands out of nowhere, so we can use that mana to perhaps activate Barrage Tyrant or maybe pump up our small sludge crawler into a giant monstrosity. And then we get to our mana base, which is pretty simple. 10 swamps, 9 mountains, and then 2 smoldering marsh, 2 dragon skull summit. So most of the time all our lands will come into play untapped, which is nice for an aggressive deck like this. And our curve is pretty low with lots of 3 drops. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which we're gonna have to ship back. Alright, this one could get there. Of course we need some red mana at some point and some more creatures. But these two might get it started. Alright, mountains decent. Now we don't want to draw any more lands. And more creatures. Alright, Grixis colors. We're just going to play out a culling drone, which is probably gonna die. Would be nice if he survives, since then he gets a card for Processor Assault and Wasteland Strangler, and also a colorless creature for Dominator Drone. So let's see if our opponent is going to kill the Culling Drone here. We'll play Smoldering Marsh and go to combat. And see if our opponent pulls the trigger. Nope. Well then. Opponent casts a Telling Time. Which is kind of interesting with the ingest on the stack. So our opponent will leave one card on top with telling time, but that card is gonna get ingested. Which is a pretty neat use of a telling time. So it decided he didn't want a Nissus renewal. And now we just get to play out the Dominator drone. Which will deal two damage. Alright, so best case scenario, our opponent plays a creature that dies to Wasteland Strangler next turn. Worst case, our opponent plays Languish. Alright, no play. As we draw the third Processor Assault. Well, our opponent could have a Bounding Crisis here, but I don't think we can afford to play around it. So let's send them in. And no blocks, alright. And just some more. Opponent looks to be a ramp deck. So we could just put another creature in play. I 
think we're kind of forced to, since we have all this removal. That's not gonna deal any damage. Spell shrivel, alright. That's fine. So we have lots of removal, but no creatures to use that removal on. Alright, there's a candidate. And nothing else could have another spell shrivel in hand. And I think we just want to use up this assault. Can give this back. And if he does spell shrivel this, we still have another one. So we can attack for five. And pause the turn. After we ingest some more. Alright, looks like a traditional ramp deck, splashing some colors. Still unsure what the mountain is for and what the swamps are for, for that matter. Could just be a converge deck. Alright, let's get rid of Culling Drone. So this deck is kind of all over the place. Alright, Touch of the Void is nice. So let's see if we get to hit for three here. We do. So, Spell Shrivel would be kind of annoying here, since that would still counter the Touch of the Void. On the other hand, our opponent could just untap and gain life with a card like uh, Nissa's Renewal, but I think we just pause a turn here. It's more likely our opponent has a counter spell than it is um, that he has a way to gain life this turn. Gaia's Revenge is fine, so now we get to untap and cast Touch of the Void for the win. And even though these cards are colorless, we still can't use Processor Assault on Gaia's Revenge, since uh, Gaia's Revenge can't be the target of non-green spells, and since colorless is non-green, that still doesn't work. But Touch of the Void will work here. And sweet, we got a game that didn't look too great, but luckily our opponent didn't have early removal for our first few creatures. Alright, let's take a look at our opening hand, which is on the expensive side here. With a 4 and a 6, only 2 lands, and we are on the play. Yeah, I think we have to try another one. Yeah, this is only one land. This one we can try to keep, but we need to draw a black source as soon as possible. And Jadi offshoot is gonna be annoying as it gains our opponent life and blocks our culling drone. Well, at least we get to play our Forerunner here. And next turn we can either play Touch of the Void or play Culling Drone, give it haste. Alright, Island into Gate Creeper Vine. Alright, let's go ahead and play Culling Drone and give it haste. Even though opponent's just gonna block it with the offshoot. And next turn we could maybe touch of the void the offshoot. 
opponent decided not to jump with the Gate Creeper Vine, which is interesting. Opponent gaining more life. Alright, I think it's time to touch the offshoot here. And attack. Now our opponent does jump. And we get to play the crawler. Pause the turn. So our opponent could have something like an acid moss to destroy our swamp here. And there it is. Hopefully we don't draw too many black spells. But at least we get to hit for a healthy amount. Oh well. Opponent down to 10. And that's a good one to exile. Spell shrivel as well, so our opponent also has counter spells we need to worry about. But in blue green, there's not a lot of sweeping effects. Although in this spot, a uh, whelming wave returning our creatures to our hands would be pretty deadly since we can't replay them. Instead, Drowner of Hope is also pretty good here, as it stabilizes the board. So drawing our 5 damage removal spell would be pretty awesome here. I'll take a Pia and Kieran as well. So we can send in everyone on a suicide mission, get the Forerunner killed. And then perhaps get in for 3 damage. Yeah. I think we need to get in the damage while we can. Punt is going to block our Forerunner. But I still prefer playing P and Kiran here over activating the Sludge Crawler. Since if our opponent has another land destruction spell we don't even get to play P and Kiran anymore. And getting the flyers out there is important. Meanwhile, we exiled another two pretty decent cards here. And Nissa shows up to the party. She's gonna transform. And let's see if her opponent goes upstairs. Yes, he does. Reveals a land. So as long as our opponent doesn't gain life, we have a way to try and kill our opponent with our flyers and then activating Pian Kirin. From Beyond might be problematic since that can find an Ulamog for our opponent, which will deal with all the things we're trying to do. And there's not much we can do about it. Also, From Beyond plus Drowner of Hope is pretty sweet. Since that's an infinite supply of creatures that can tap down our creatures as well. Let's go to combat. Send in everyone at our opponent. Um, no point sending in ever anyone else, I think. Yep. Pause the turn. Opponent's going to sacrifice the From Beyond at the end of his turn. And let's see what he searches up. It's Ulamog. Big surprise. Plays a land. So can play Ulamog without having to sacrifice any sign tokens. A breaker of armies is bad news.
So let's see what the Ulamog is going to exile here. Probably just the two Thopter tokens. Nope, instead. Pian Kiran. So I think we want to uh, sacrifice a Thopter here to deal the extra point of damage. And if we top deck a touch of the void, I would be pretty happy here. But since we already played one, it's pretty unlikely. And no points in blocking, although I think we actually do have to block because otherwise our opponent just taps down our two blockers next turn and hits us for 15. And if we're taking five here, we're just dead. So let's jump. And we have this turn to top deck and next turn to top deck. Opponent taps down our Thopter. So we're not dead yet, most likely here. So we have one turn to top deck, touch of the void. And of course, if our opponent gains life here, we're also just dead. Lumbering Falls is not gonna gain our opponent any life. So do we get another turn? Desolation Twin doesn't matter. Let's see if Ulamog exiles or last copy of Touch of the Void. There it goes. And... I don't see Touch of the Void. Come on, top deck. One time. Ah, it's a swamp. Alright, so we get to play a Forerunner here. Give it haste and maybe our opponent forgets to block. Which seems unlikely. Drowner of Hope taps down our last hope. Give Forerunner haste and try to get in there one last time. And unless our opponent has a stroke here, yeah, we're gonna die. Alright, well, destroying the black source was kind of a pain there at the start, but it was mainly the Drowner of Hope on turn, I think, 5 that uh, sealed the deal since we weren't able to get past and this is not necessary as we are just dead to an attack all right opponent gets to see our sweet deck before we're dead to ulamog but we'll be back in the next game all right, so let's take a look at our opening hand, which is a little full of three drops here, but I think it's still keepable. And let's lead off with... Doesn't really matter. Let's go with the mountain. Pause the turn and see what we're up against. That's a plains and no turn one play. All right, let's go ahead and play another mountain. So we don't show yet that we're a red-black. And we don't have any double-black spells, so... All right, to open free blade is a good one. So now we have to decide if we want to play Touch of the Void or Vile Aggregate. Given that we have two of them, it might be good to get one out there. Opponent could have a way to make this uh, gain flying and then hit us and then get this renowned. So if he has the enchantments, then he gets out of reach of Touch of the Void. 
So it might be beneficial to just kill it right now. If he doesn't have the enchantment, getting the Vile Aggregate out there is very good because we have a blocker to stop this from getting renowned. And we get to develop our board. So I think we just play out the Vile Aggregate here and hope our opponent doesn't have any enchantments to pump up the Dopen Freeblade. Because we are certainly gonna block if he attacks. Alright, another island. Could be Claustrophobia perhaps to incapacitate our Vile Aggregate. Instead it's in Anchor to the Aether. Alright, still not as bad as an enchantment because we still get to touch of the void the renowned Topon Free Blade. Hits us for two and we just replay the Vile Aggregate here. Because I think if our opponent had the enchantment he would have used that instead. Although maybe, maybe he doesn't. So we still have to hope he doesn't make the free blade larger here. Alright, fourth land. And it's gonna be a Whirler Rogue which can make the free blade unblockable. And also puts some flyers into play. So next turn, unfortunately we still can only play one card as we only drew three drops here. So it might be time to touch of the void the Topon Free Blade. Or we might just want to get another Vile Aggregate out there. Drawing a two drop would be great here. Nope. All right. Um, yeah, I think we have to get rid of the Free Blade here. And then next turn we can double it up. We could just play another aggregate here, and then, I mean, this does develop our board better, but we give our opponent another turn to put an enchantment on the free blade, perhaps. So I think we have to play it a little safer here, and just cast the touch of the void. Now that we're sure that the free blade will die, and now we get to pass. And our opponent gets to hit us, hit us for two at least. But next turn we'll have two aggregates with three power in play. Five mana, could have lots of things here. Whirler Rogue is gonna stay back. Go to 13 here. And no play is very suspicious, so it could have some sort of counter spell. But we're gonna have to find out. Play Dominator Drone first. And it's gonna drain our opponent for two. And then play Vile Aggregate. And I think we do get in there now, since we have to start doing some damage. And opponent has a Disperse to send it back. Alright, that's not the end of the world. And that's it. Alright, sweet. I think that was a pretty good turn for us. We have drawn a lot of lands here, which is not ideal. So we would like to draw some more creatures or spells. Apia and Kieran could uh, stop the Thopters and would also make the Vile Aggregates enormous. Alright, instead it's a Disciple of the Ring, which has a lot of abilities here. And it's got two instants or sorceries as fuel. Just gonna attack for two. And our opponent can activate this once to tap, untap a creature 
give it plus one plus one. All right, Forerunner is a good draw here. So we get to play it. Get to play Vile Aggregate. And give the Vile Aggregate haste. And let's see. Opponent gives us plus one plus one. Four, five. So if we attack with both aggregates, our opponent could double block, give this plus one plus one. Or just double block and then still eat a vile aggregate. And we just get to eat a whirler rogue, which is not great for us. But I think we kind of have to get a move on here. Because an unchecked disciple can do a lot of damage. So... Well, I guess if we're put on double blocks, he has to give this plus one plus one, otherwise we get to kill this. But he can wait until we order the blockers. If we put this first, he gives it plus one plus one, otherwise he doesn't. So, I expect a double block here. And we only get to eat a Whirler Rogue, or we get to eat nothing and force our opponent to get rid of a card, but that doesn't seem great. Alright, this is strange, so maybe our opponent just a single block, and gonna give this plus one plus one. Yeah, that's definitely a misplay. Unless our opponent really wants to save the Whirler Rogue for some reason. So they just bounce off of each other, opponent gets hit for 4, and we get to exile a card. Alright, so we're not in a terrible spot now. Definitely have some sweet draws left. So what happens if our opponent attacks with the Whirler Rogue? Do we block? I don't think we do. Alright, Suppression Bonds on the Vile Aggregate is fine. At least we still have a colorless creature in play for the other aggregate here. And if we ever draw a Barrage Tyrant, we can just sacrifice the aggregate to deal for. So definitely better than a Reprisal, for example. Just gonna hit for two. Okay. So we still have some time if our opponent is playing this conservatively. And there's Barrage Tyrant. Sweet. So now we get to play it. And we could give it haste and attack, but I don't really want to trade Barrage Tyrant for Disciple. Um, so I'm just going to... Let's see what our opponent does here. It's gonna perhaps step down the Vile Aggregate with Disciple. Yep, so we could give this haste now in response to still be able to attack with it. But do we even want to attack with Barrage Tyrant and trade it with Disciple? I don't think so since we can throw the aggregate at it and still have it in play. And we're definitely not attacking with our 3-2s, so yeah, let's just let this happen. And pause the turn. Opponent has no more fuel for the Disciple. So unless he has a sweeper of some sort here, I think he's in trouble. Opponent goes to combat and sends in everyone. Except for the Whirler Rogue. And except for the Disciple. Well, nope, the Disciple's getting in there. And our opponent decided he's had enough. Alright, so we could trade here, but again, I don't think we want to do that. We could double block here and trade two for one, but that doesn't seem great with aggregates in play. So I think I'll just take five here. 
blue white is not gonna have any burn spells to finish us off so I, I think at four we're still pretty safe so now we get to attack with everyone and let's see um, do we get rid of the whirler rogue right now I don't think we do I think we just send in everyone and opponent blocks there so now we hit for 13 and then use a tyrant to kill our opponent um, so if we sacrifice the vile aggregate now then this one shrinks but we deal uh, one more with this one so it doesn't really matter here I think which one we sacrifice or when we sacrifice him all right and now we're going to throw the aggregates at our opponent all right sweet on to the next one all right let's take a look at our opening hand which is an easy mulligan this one we can keep so we can go turn one sludge crawler turn two culling drone and then at some point piant kiran so a vile aggregate would be an awesome draw since that also gets the bonus from piant kiran don't really want more lands green black and gate creeper vine so we get to play land attack and pump if our opponent blocks gets a an island all right file aggregates right on time still gonna attack here and pump if our opponent blocks Opponent doesn't block, so we get to play Culling Drone. And this is a pretty awesome curve. So hopefully Vile Aggregate survives to tell the tale. And it's gonna be Nissa's Pilgrimage ramping our opponent. Could have an Acid Moss next turn to delay Pian Kirin. Still going to attack. But now I think I won't bump if our opponent blocks the Crawler, since I really want to play the Aggregate. But our opponent decided to jump, which is good for us. Play Aggregate. So if your opponent destroys our reds, uh, our black source, we can't play the crawler anymore. But uh, we should still be able to play P and Kieran. And we have a decent board state. Evolving wilds, getting a swamp means our opponent could have a languish in hand he wants to cast next turn. Alright, another swamp is nice, so we'll just play out P and Kieran and attack for lots and lots of damage all right and it looks like we're good opponent down to 10 on turn 4 exile some more cards we see a grave digger and a reef soul so not a traditional ramp deck, looks like, more a controlling green-black value deck. Which definitely could have a languish here. But at least we'll still have the file aggregates, but looks like our opponent did not have the languish. And just plays out a woodland bellower. Which could get a Reclamation Sage, which destroys a Thopter instead. It's 
just an elvish visionary so now we get to play out wow that's just the nut draw sludge crawler into dust stalker and i'm not even gonna think about it too much just send everyone and I think this is going to be good enough. Well, maybe our opponent's at 1. Alright, fine. So if our opponent has a uh, language now, we're actually in trouble. <laughs> as weird as it may sound. Because we no longer have our vile aggregate. But yeah, our opponent didn't have language last turn. Probably doesn't have it this turn. So, if I did the math correctly, I probably would have just not played the Dust Talker, since that's a good follow up to a Languish. So, I just should have attacked with the creatures in play, maybe pumped up a Slush Crawler and then kept the Dust Talker in hand. But looks like it's not gonna matter here. Sweet, that was a pretty good curve there. So I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day!